not before you. Okay. All right. So may I then ask Professor Gonzalez from IID Monday, which is a new, new Monday coming up, to make his presentation and his vision of design. Could I get that uh, remote? Remote. <coughs> Monday, IIT Monday, 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 this is an opportunity to <coughs> relook at the BTEC <coughs> at the curriculum and focus it more towards uh, the, uh, more towards design. <coughs> Looking at uh, engineering and the evolution of engineering over the ages, uh, until about from the Middle Ages until about the early 20th century, if you look, uh, a lot of the famous engineering inventors were actually uh, creative people, artists, uh, uh, and, and so on. Uh, for instance, Samuel Morse, who was the co-inventor of the telegraph and the Morse code. He was actually a painter until the age of 34. And then one day he got a message that his wife was dying. And by the time he reached his home, uh, she had passed away. He was in a remote city. And then, and so this motivated him to work on, on long distance communication. <coughs> so he went from painting to uh, in, uh, inventing the telegraph and the, and the, and the Morse code. Uh, engineering education for a long time <coughs> was essentially <coughs> an engineering as an artisan, an apprentice who would learn from a master and of course a lot of handbooks and other things were, 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 were used. <coughs> in, uh, in the Second World War, uh, particularly, uh, engineering began to have a science, scientific base with the use of engineering and use of science for radar, sonar, encryption, and so on and so forth. The science base came forward and then uh, after, in the 1950s onwards, there was a strong push, particularly from universities like MIT, Stanford, and, and so on, <coughs> to make engineering more into a scientific discipline rather than, uh, than so the, the sort of uh, influence of the arts declined in, in engineering design. Now we find that there is a sort of shift back <coughs> that uh, there are seen to be disadvantages of engineering becoming too much of a science, too much of uh, use of computers and theory, that more of hands-on is required, as I think the person from Tata Motors had indicated. <coughs> Um, <coughs> so, for instance, at MIT, there is a program called Conceive, Design, Implement, and Operate in, in the undergraduate education. <coughs> at uh, IIT Madras, for the last 20 years, there's been a lot of uh, incubation of companies, product design, and so on, by students and faculty in, in, in the institute working with companies. And <coughs> what I'll talk about now <coughs> is the, uh, what we've been doing in trying to promote design and innovation at uh, IIT Mandi uh, through our BTEC curriculum. <coughs> What, what we've recognized uh, is that design is inherently interdisciplinary and it requires, <coughs> uh, and we, felt, we feel that uh, design is something that is, is best learned through doing rather than, uh, than something that is taught. So there are two things that we've introduced into our curriculum which are a bit different from the traditional. One is the idea of a practicum, which is essentially a lab-based course which is practiced before theory. <coughs> so the idea is rather than uh, giving people the theory and then they, they, they go to the lab and reinforce the theory. Instead, we let them loosen the lab and they learn uh, the theory by doing uh, on, on their own. The second is uh, design and innovation stream. Of, uh, essentially, this is a stream of projects all the way from the first year to the fourth year in which students work on interdisciplinary, in interdisciplinary teams. They work on real world pro problems. They are often randomly assigned to teams so that they learn to work with anyone else. And uh, they learn different aspects of the type of design that an engineer would do in, in the real world. <coughs> so this starts out in the first year with uh, reverse engineering, where, where teams are given, say, something like a ceiling fan or a mixie. They're expected to dismantle it, thoroughly document it, and then reassemble it, get it working, and maybe even, in, uh, maybe even improve.
improve it. So this is learning sort of the state of the art, which is the, maybe one of the first things that engineers do. In the second year, <coughs> students are expected, again, in uh, randomly chosen interdisciplinary teams, they are expected to choose some problem of society and then uh, devise a solution to it. And by the end of the semester, they must have a working prototype. These are, remember, second year students. They haven't learned very much of advanced theory in their discipline. And uh, there is an open house at the end of the semester. And the grade that they get for this course depends on their having something working in the open house. And we find this is a tremendous motivation to the students. They are, all teams always have something working at the, at the open house. So, so some examples are uh, what you see over there is an intelligent drip irrigation system for small farmers in the region. <coughs> there were about six teams, I think, that have developed uh, means of charging cell phones, obviously a serious problem for, for society. Um, <coughs> and <there's coughs> over here you can see on the left-hand side is a low-cost 3D printer that cost 25,000 rupees. And this is a b bunch of second-year students who, built, who designed and built this and had it working um, <coughs> by the end of the semester. And there's an oil spill remover and a number of other projects. Um, <coughs> in, uh, in the, uh, when, when we design a product and if you want the product to, to, to be widely used, of course, it's, we have to understand society. We have to understand the people who are going to use it. So in the third year, we have a project where students uh, study the interaction of technology and society. Um, and this might involve things like market research, field, field work, and so on. Typically, this, uh, many, most of the projects are taken up uh, looking at problems of the villages or the, of, of Himachal, the region that we're, that we're in. For instance, the, the team on the right looked at the postal service in, in Himachal, in, in rural areas, to see how the postal service can be improved with the spread of internet and mobile phones to remote villages. One of the unusual things that we've done over here, well, that to, to one is that the uh, humanities faculty are significantly involved in guiding these projects. It's not only engineering faculty who are involved. And uh, for this third year project in particular, we have a collaboration with a university in Massachusetts, WPI, where every year about 20 of their students come and spend two to three months in Mundi, and they work in teams along with our students. So this brings in not only multidisciplinary, but also multicultural uh, dimension to the education that our students get, which I think, which they find V very valuable. Um, <coughs> in the fourth year, we have the usual major technical project <coughs> and uh, where students are expected to go in depth in their technical area. <coughs> and in one uh, example of a project in the first, the first batch of our students who graduated last year, one team won this um, <coughs> second prize in the Joy of Engineering, Design and Innovation competition held at ISC Bangalore. They got a prize for that. Um <coughs> In, in addition, we have significant in industry interaction or we try for our students. For instance, we get people from industry to, as guest lecturers. We have industry-sponsored projects. We, of course, students go for internship to industry. And we have now started a scheme by which students within IIT can start virtual companies where IIT will be the customer so that they can get the experience of entrepreneurship even while they're students before they graduate. Um, <coughs> Some of the outcomes of, the, uh, as I said, we've just, uh, our first batch just graduated. We had our convocation a couple of weeks ago. So it's difficult to say that whether this new approach, this, this approach to design in engineering education is successful or not. But some examples are that we, uh, the IIT Mundi website was designed by our students and has been operated by them since. The online faculty application with several thousand applicants come through, has again, has been designed by uh, uh, students, second year students, and placements have been very good on par with other IITs. So, <coughs> of course, uh, only one batch has graduated, so I see the jury is still out. Uh, we will see in the, we will, we hope that, we believe that this approach to, uh, uh, to education does give students a better handle on design and does make them better at, at doing the type of real world engineering that, that uh, they have to do when they, when they go out into the world. So, <coughs> <coughs> so, so that uh, th thank you. These are some uh, links to some of what I've talked about. Thank you.